Well, welcome everyone. Happy Friday. Another fantastic episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. And it's actually episode 42 today. And I have a lovely lady by the name of Maria Van Vuklis. And the topic of today is how to shift your thinking to pave the way for a new perspective and the future results. So I am fascinated to get into this content with Maria. But before we do, I thought I'd just give everybody a quick intro into who Maria is. Now, Maria is a business coach and trainer in Neuro Linguistic Programming, or NLP. She is the director and founder of The Conscious CEO, with over 15 years combined experience in personal and professional development. Maria, Maria works with coaches and consultants to increase their personal and professional business performance by mastering the art of language communication and the power of resilience so welcome maria hi darren thanks for having me ah oh, thanks for, thanks for coming on the show and i'm really excited because i love this kind of stuff you know, nlp and mindset and you know we're going to be chatting about how you can change your perspective to really achieve the res the, the dreams that you have so i love this topic and uh, i thought before we get into some q a Maybe tell us a bit about you. Uh, well, my name's Maria Van Buklis, um, and as you said, I'm the founder and director of The Conscious CEO. Um, I've been in business for or over yeah, 20 years now. I've had multiple different um, facets of business from the health industry uh, to uh, I was in the police force as well. So I've mm -hmm. really had a clear understanding in terms of how people communicate um, but the way the basis of communication is pretty much all the same in no matter what aspect we, we do that in. Um, so I, uh, yeah, so what I have been on my own personal journey with my own um, personal and professional development, and it's led me to where I am now in helping other businesses build and grow uh, within themselves and also make uh, a profitable business as well. Fantastic. And I love you know, whenever we talk about communication, it's so interesting because, you know, depending on the um, medium you're using, but when you're working face-to-face -face or talking to someone face-to-face, -face, communication is like 80%, 85% non-verbal, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's all about um, the basis of communication um, really is in tonality more specifically mm -hmm. than what it is in the words that you use or even the... Um, uh, you know, the way that we actually project that as well. And body language actually plays a big role. Definitely. I mean, that's, there's a whole topic called sub-communication and that's what all that is, isn't it? I think that's yeah. fascinating stuff. I've done some reading on that and it's really, really interesting. But my first question today is I want to kind of dive into the realm of mindset and perspective. So I think it was Albert Einstein that said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And we all do this constantly. So what's your take on that? Um, so everyone is programmed a specific way, yep. uh, whether they're conscious of it or not. And what um, you know, this quote specifically means is that we uh, run these specific programs unconsciously and we continue to expect a different change based on the same programming that we're actually running. Yeah. So the idea is to be aware of what those steps are that's causing you to make those decisions yep. and know how to take feedback from that in being able to make those minor adjustments to be able to create different results from that. Uh, so an example of that would be trying to build a house with uh, foundations that are made of mud and expecting to build a solid structure of a house when in fact, if you go and continuously do that, the house will eventually crumble. Yeah. But if we change our approach in being able to uh, know how to do things differently, we can create solid structures and create um, great results. Awesome. So that's where it all comes down to what we're going to chat about today. How do we change our foundation and our perspective to build those strong foundations that will get us the results we want? Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, how do you work with people to really start to shift their way of thinking to build those foundations? 
Yeah, so that's a great question. And the way that I actually work with people is being able to um, understand what's actually happening on an unconscious level. And we run these things called strategies and they are the basis of the programs that we run to be able to create the results that we want to create. And in everything that we do, we have strategies for. And in business, we are uh, a lot of people in business are taught how to do a great strategy yep. the steps to be able to create a profitable business but when we actually look at it that is actually only 20 percent of the results because 80 percent of what we actually do is actually the execution of of those results so what i do is i actually work with um, coaches and consultants to actually identify what patterns and behaviors they actually are running on an unconscious level and how to be able to make those adjustments and reprogram uh, their thinking to be able to bridge that gap between the strategy and the mindset to create the results that they want. Fantastic. And that's fascinating. And I I agree with you 100%. For me, everything is about, or it's 80% execution and 20% strategy and preparation. But why is it that we tend not to execute or we have this natural tendency to think and strategize and we never follow through? Why does that happen? Um, That's a great question. And a lot of the time that happens because, uh, number one, we have uh, our inner um, negative self-talk that prevents us from actually taking action. Number two is that we may not actually have the resources to know how to go about in being able to execute that. Um, But also environment plays a big role as well. You can have a great strategy, but if your environment that you are in does not support those results, uh, it can either inhibit or slow down the actual process of being able to achieve those results. Okay, I love it. And so when we talk about environment, we can talk about our circle of um, friends, our, our family, our circle of influence when it comes to uh, where we work. You know, and they, I heard a great um, saying, I think you are the sum of the five closest people around you. And yeah. that, that goes to show you that your circle of influence has such a, a powerful impact on how you think and how and what your mindset's going to be and thus what you're going to be able to achieve because of the way you think. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. So the people that you do surround yourself with can also uh, influence how you behave as well, because we tend to, as, as humans, as creatures, we tend to adopt those beliefs of those people around us. So being mindful and aware of who we actually spend the most time with, uh, will also, um, create, you know, a different way of thinking in being able to, uh, produce results, you know, exceptional results that is. Awesome. And so I'd love to hear more about you know, how you actually work with people. How, does, what's the program? Is it um, over a certain period of time? How you work with NLP? Tell us a bit more about the actual nitty gritty details of how you get someone from one mindset to another one where they're actually achieving and they're achieving their life's goals. Yeah, sure. So I, um, I work with people one-on-one. Um, yeah. So that's one facet of it. And what we do is we go back and we uncover um, through a detailed personal history, what are their beliefs are, what are their um, uh, negative emotions that they may be carrying that's um, preventing them from making strategic decisions from a critical place. Um, And also what are their values? Because values also determines the result of the decisions that you make of what's most important to you. So we uncover those and then we clear out uh, all the uh, redundant or unresourceful uh, strategies and emotions that are inhibiting that person to be able to increase their performance and then install our new behaviours and belief systems to be able to increase that, uh, realign their values so they end up uh, as a congruent person in what they want to achieve. Um, and then create a um, solid goal and strategy plan to be able to go out and take action on what they do. So that's one aspect with the one-on-one coaching. Perfect. And then I do um, certification programs, specifically in neuro-linguistic t- uh, programming, timeline therapy, and hypnosis. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, so I work with people uh, mainly uh, in teams of business owners uh, with their management and also um, high-level um, CEOs right. specifically. Um, what this does, it gives clarity around what their sales system is, also how they manage their team to create more cohesiveness, um, but also improving their negotiation skills um, throughout um, you know, uh, business as well. Fantastic. So you do a lot of workshops as well, corporate workshops. Absolutely. Do you train managers on how to best work with their people? And it, and it follows through that way. Yes, yes. Wow. And now I'd love to hear more about NLP because NLP has been something that it's been around for quite a while now and I've heard a lot about it. But is NLP the be all and end all when it comes to this or is it just one part of the process? You mentioned hypnotherapy. I mean, obviously, you might combine hypnotherapy with NLP with other things. So I'd love to learn more about, you know, how you actually gauge and read people um, with NLP and, and what you do with hyp hypnosis. Yeah, sure. Great question. Um, so NLP has been around for some time. It's yeah. been around since the 70s. Um, and it was created by a guy called Richard Bandler and John Grindler. And um, they were actually, um, just to, not to bore you with too much history, <laughs> but one of them was a physicist and the other one was a computer programmer. And they okay. came together and they found out that you can actually shift people's behaviours and thinking by actually reprogramming their mind. And to break this down, NLP is all about so uh, neuro, which is all about the nervous system and how we actually store all our emotions and um, thinking and how we actually behave is stored in the nervous system. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, linguistics is all about language. So a big part of the results that we uh, go out and achieve is how we actually communicate not only with others, but with ourselves. And uh, we communicate based on our five senses. However, the one biggest point of communication is our self-talk, which most people are unaware of. Wow. And it was actually this guy um, that did a study, uh, Penfold, and he actually uh, uh, studied how many times we actually have thoughts within our own mind. And he calculated uh, in this study that it was about 80,000 thoughts in one day that we think within ourselves. Wow. So it's a large amount and most of the time people are really unconscious and unaware of what they're actually saying to themselves. So by knowing how to master the like linguistics and language with yep. ourselves um, allows us to be able to reprogram. So that's the programming part of yep. NLP gotcha. um, to be able to change what's in the neurology to create new resourceful strategies. So NLP is all about excellence and creating excellence. We don't fix people. We take people and how to be able to get them to a higher, more performing um, place from where they are already. Amazing. And so it's almost like you're helping them become aware of themselves and their inner dialogue so they can actually start to change that and get res different results. Absolutely. And once they do that, they're able to know how to communicate with others um, effectively as well. So, um, so NLP is all about um, shifting and changing the way that you think about things in order to change the result and the action that you're actually wanting to have. Gotcha. And do you, does it come second nature to someone like you that's been doing it a long time or do you have to <laughs> actively study me? Because I always think when I talk to somebody that's, you know, a practitioner in NLP that, are you reading me right now or do you have to actually take a step to think and analyze? How does that work? Oh, <laughs> uh, look, yeah, so it does take time. Anything yeah. that you want to learn does take time to be able to uh, master. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, repetition is, is, is the master of uh, being able to uh, know it, you know, without having to think about it. So uh, for someone such as myself that's been studying it for many years and I'm a trainer, so that yeah. takes extensive amounts of, of study to be able to do that. And I'm at the moment in a master trainer program, which is the next level from that, oh, wow. to be able to, um, you know, continue my learning. Uh, and a lot of the, uh, the, the people that come to me at the practitioner level, which is the basis level, they say to me, oh, Maria, like, how do I actually do this, like, on the whim? And I'm yeah. like, 
you've got to keep practicing and that's how you actually just get better at what you do. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of things that we use to be able to read people and it's, you know, eye patterning, it's sensory acuity, which is like the colouring of the face, but also the language that they're using it gives you an idea how the person is actually wanting to communicate, how they are communicating, how they like to be communicated, the tonality, the, uh, the tempo, there's many different things. Uh, even also um, based on, you know, for example, uh, when you're talking to someone, how they dress gives you a good idea what their values are as really? well. Really? So Fantastic. Many facets and factors in terms of being able to identify how to be able to communicate in the other person's language rather than um, communicating from your language. Gotcha. So it sounds like obviously there are a lot of different levels and insights to NLP. So it's not that simple to just kind of read someone in in their entirety, but you can pick up little signals from brief interactions. Absolutely. Yeah. Like if I look, if my eyes go that way, if I'm thinking, then you kind of know one thing. If I, if I say <laughs> certain, I always find that fascinating. I think I'm going to have to come and do a class with you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now I'd love to hear more about maybe a case study or an example, or maybe a series of examples where you might have um, really made a difference to someone or a group of people's lives with what you do and obviously be, you know, keeping confidentiality, but maybe tell us a bit about, you know, how you've done something that's, uh, and, and the outcome. And I'd, I'd love to hear that. Sure. Um, so I had a lady come to me and she's a, um, she's a natural health practitioner and she came to me in wanting to improve her uh, profitability in her business. She wanted cash flow. Right. Um, and she was a person that was, fantastic in terms of implementing strategy, knew what to do, execute, but always was hit up against things like uh, lack of productivity, overwhelm, getting caught up in the detail all the time, uh, had limiting beliefs around money specifically. She could sell, but it was that the money wasn't actually um, coming in uh, consistently. Um, so the one thing that we identified was that she had the strategy in place. She knew exactly who she was working with. She was a well-established business already, had two clinics going. Um, however, the language that she was actually using to be able to communicate with her patients um, wasn't actually um, uh, effectively bringing in more clients. So what we did is we uncovered what was happening on an unconscious level. Yep. And um, a lot of this came up from the past in her childhood around, um, you know, her sister or her mother um, who installed beliefs at such a young age that she wasn't good enough. Right. Now, um, a lot of that also was around self-acceptance as well. So to think about business as though business is just going out and taking action on a specific strategy, it's not necessarily uh, just that. If we look at deeper structures of problems, it's actually much more deeper in terms of what's happening within, um, within people themselves. So what happened was, was we actually um, went through her values and we found that money wasn't actually on the top five oh, of wow. her values. Okay. So we had to um, uh, switch around her values, be able to clear out what was actually preventing her from actually making money in her business, realign her values, get her congruent. Uh, and also um, by doing that process, her language also started to change as well in how she was communicating. Um, so we will be able to do that. After a period of about six months, she increased her profits by 20% after wow. by just doing that. Yeah. Just by conscious awareness of her yeah. inner thinking and mm -hmm. actively changing her way of thinking and her language. Absolutely. And therefore her actions. Yeah. Fascinating. Because it's so true. Like anything we do, whether it's a business activity, a sporting activity, um, any non, in any activity that's not personal, you can usually draw back our confidence and our belief in ourselves to a personal place. Yep. Uh, that's, that's right. Fascinating, fascinating mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. so I suppose that's why you really have to spend time to go deep. And that's quite painful for people. We don't want to do that, do we? No, that's correct. Because um, it's easier to be ignorant, to keep your head in the sand than to actually deal with what's going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so, so when, and obviously when you work with people, you work with people over, everybody has a different situation. So you'd be working with people 
over different uh, time frame. Some people you'll achieve results much faster than others. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, to give you an, another example on that, right, I uh, ran a training for a financial service company. They were financial advisors and they were all men. Okay. And um, people in finance are really um, great at detail, but not really great at uh, seeing the bigger picture. So communication is quite transactional. And um, I was talking to one of the managers and he was actually the accountant for the firm. And he was saying, he came back to me and he said, oh, Maria, you know, with what I learned through the whole NLP course, I'm so glad I learned it because what, with what's happening now would have been in a heap of mess. Yeah. That was his specific words. So it just goes to show that being able to learn these tools and techniques, it creates flexibility in your thinking to know how to be adaptive uh, in different situations. So I always have this saying, the person with the most flexibility um, has the greatest results in their behavior. So I love that. Mm. I suppose that, um, I mean, how has NLP and you know, your level of NLP helped you in this period we're in now? Uh, well, uh, it would have, if I hadn't know if I didn't know what I had known now, I probably would have been quite stressed out, quite reactive and making decisions, uh, not strategically. Right. And what, uh, what this, what NLP does, it allows you to see, uh, situations, uh, without having the emotional attachment to be able to critically think about things and also to run a, uh, a decision-making strategy that will enable you to be able to uh, create results rather than being reactive in what's just happening now. So it allows you to be in control of your state. So that's what it has allowed me to do, um, to be able to be empowered rather than disempowered by what's happening around at the moment. Perfect. And um, for example, do you, do you meditate as well? Is that something that helps um that, that level of consciousness or it's really, it doesn't really matter? Uh, personally, I do meditate. Uh, when you do talk to business people and you ask them, do you meditate? They go, <laughs> oh, what's this woo-woo stuff? But, <laughs> but um, it does have plenty of uh, benefits. You know, another form of that is, you know, self-hypnosis as well. Self-hypnosis. Um, I've never heard of self-hypnosis. Yeah, and there's um, oh. there's plenty of ways to be able to do that, and um, you just like there's so many recordings available. I've I've right. got plenty of them available myself that I've put up. There's resources, um, so people can actually just listen to those if they don't know how to be able to meditate, uh, because it can be quite foreign to someone quite new to it. Yeah, because to me that it's all connected. Like I did a course a little while back which was a meditation and mindfulness course. Oh, great. It's fascinating. And I think they say that mindfulness is the daily constant practice of meditation. Is that right? Absolutely. The other way around. No, absolutely. Yeah. It's being conscious in the now. In the now. And meditation is just like yeah. you know, practice once or twice a day to train your muscle to be able to maintain mindfulness throughout the day. Yes. And access it whenever you need it. And so that's what is fascinating to me because it all boils down to self-awareness and knowing your state. And as you just mentioned, you know, it's about knowing where you're at and then not reacting, but rather taking a bit of time to restabilize, we re-equilibrate and you can then control your, your responses. So all these different philosophies and practices kind of all still blend into one when it comes to taking control of your inner self and your reactions and your, and the way you think, which really all boils down to the same thing, mindset and perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So fascinating stuff. Excellent. Maria. So if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Uh, they can connect with me on LinkedIn, which is just Maria Van Vuklis or on Facebook, which is the conscious CEO NLP. Um, or you can uh, contact me via email, which is uh, hello at mariavanvuklis.com. Fantastic. Well, now I always like to ask my guests at the end of the uh, session, what are one or two things that just come to, you, to your head, come to mind, two little tips that you could give people to allow them to really um, take control of their mindset and perspective moving forward, even before they come and do a session with you? 
Great. Um, so there are a couple of things that I'd love to share that you can actually implement straight away. Sure. Number one is give yourself, if you are in a funk, is give yourself 90 seconds to feel it and then move on to something else. Okay. So give yourself permission to feel it, but don't allow, not allow yourself to, uh, to continue to feel it for longer than 90 seconds. Right. The other thing is, is the key with getting control of your state is all about asking yourself the right questions. Um, and that's all about the communication aspect of it as well. And um, to be able to, uh, if you get caught in the detail, is to be able to know how to be able to see the picture. And a great question is for that, to get yourself out of the detail, if you are feeling overwhelmed, is what's the intention of this or what's the purpose of this? Gotcha. So that's a great question. If you are a big picture person and you've got a, um, a project that you've got to be able to create um, quickly uh, and you, you love to be able to, you know, create things but not really great with the detail is what specifically do I need to achieve? What specifically is a great question to ask yourself yeah. um, to be able to continuously find out what you need to do on that to-do list? The one key thing I have noticed um, in these times now is a lot of people are really unsure how to be able to laterally think about things to know how to do things differently. Yep. And a great question to ask yourself if you are, for example, wanting to make money or wanting to create a different result is to ask yourself, what's another example of this? What's another example of that to be able to get another uh, way of being able to do something that creates that same result? I love that. That's really, and it just goes to show you the power of questioning. It's Absolutely. incredible. I really love that. So two really great takeaways. First one, allow yourself, give yourself permission to just be with whatever it is that happened, but only for 90 seconds, no more. That's right. And then start asking yourself the right questions to allow you to really achieve different results. Instead of dwelling and just saying, why is this happening to me? Ask yourself a constructive question like, what else could I do to change this? What, what, what other options do I have? How can exactly. I get from A to Z when I'm here now, instead of saying, why is this happening? What, you know, poor me, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, all the why questions, they're dead end questions. So all the how and the what questions opens up new ways of thinking to create more resources. I love that. That is really mm. cool. I love it. Beautiful. <laughs> well, Maria, thank you so much for being on the show this morning. It was absolutely fascinating. And for anybody out there who's looking to learn more about themselves, learn how to set up a better foundation for better results, study NLP, or work with Maria, please get in touch with Maria and I'll put all the uh, details for Maria in the show notes. Um, so Maria, thank you once again for being here on a Friday. Thank you so much for having me, Darren. It's been lovely. My pleasure. And for everybody out there, have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you next week for the next episode. Bye for now.